Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today I am working on my entry for the Great Pumpkin Challenge. So this is a challenge started by Dina Tolfson. She does a lot of these challenges every couple of months or so. This is the second one that I've taken part in. They're always a lot of fun to watch and to make pieces for. Dina is a wonderfully supportive artist and uh, she makes some really pretty paintings, <laughs> often of water lilies, which I really enjoy. They're one of my favorite flowers. But anyway, I'll be linking her below, and she's going to make a playlist of all the entries for this challenge, so I will link that below when I can find it. Let's get into this piece. So to start, uh, before I started filming, I put down some masking fluid and this is the first time that I've actually used masking fluid since uh, I started properly getting into watercolors again and this particular one is Dr. P.H. Martin's Frisket Mask Liquid Level 1. Uh, I found it on Amazon for like six bucks I think and was totally not sure how it was gonna work but I really needed it for this piece because I wanted to have a lighter thing in the foreground than the background and that thing in the foreground needed to have a furry outline and <laughs> doing a furry outline negatively by painting around it with the darker colors was just not gonna work <laughs> so I used a paintbrush to put down the masking fluid in sort of a flicking furry texture and I am very, very happy with this fluid. It worked so well. I'm so pleased with how the fox stands out against the background. And you can see me here also using it to maintain some lighter portions in the background where I had grasses and twigs uh, and the bottom parts of bushes growing up. This white space in the middle is eventually going to turn into a fox. It is, in fact, a baby fox. Uh, sleeping in a little grove of bushes, all peaceful and nice. Oh, here's me pulling off the <laughs> pulling off the liquid. It's not as uh, relaxing as some to take off because if you overlap it at all, it all sticks together. So that was a little bit of a bother, but uh, it did its job, <laughs> even if it wasn't so satisfying to take off. But anyway, this illustration is actually much like what I did for the turquoise challenge a few months ago, an illustration for my story that I'm writing. It just so happened that this being the Great Pumpkin Challenge, the idea was to paint or draw or whatever medium something that was either orange, like a pumpkin, or was a pumpkin. And so the next illustration that I had planned for my book was of this baby fox. So it turned out to be a perfect, I could do them together. I won't get into specifics, but my little group of heroes uh, or protagonists comes across a mother and baby fox in the woods as they are journeying. So I wanted to include that in one of my illustrations because I love foxes so much and it would be such a bright and joyful little illustration to have. So then the biggest part of this painting after the background was doing the fur and the texture of it. I looked up on YouTube, of course, uh, a tutorial for how to paint fur with watercolors because uh, it's something I've never done before. I found a really good tutorial, which I'll try to find again and link below because it was super helpful. And basically it involves putting down a base layer that's um, flat and then layering and layering and layering little flicky um, lines of fur all individually and you do it again and again and again to layer it up and <laughs> so I did let me see there was the base layer and then there was one two four layers of fur uh, not all the layers went over the entire fox. Some of the layers were only in certain places where I thought there needs to be more of this or that color. The first two layers, which were a slightly darker brownish orange, went over the entire fox. And then, and by the time I got done with both of those, I was very tired of drawing bits of fur individually. And so 
I wanted to try something else and I went for a toothbrush. I tried it out first on some other watercolor paper so it didn't wreck my piece and I found a technique that I could use to get little lines that looked like more fur and so I used that on my painting with the next layer which was a fairly bright orange. In fact I figured that this orange was a bit too bright considering how um, pastel the rest of his fur had been so I went back with another layer and used some sort of medium orange to kind of balance it out. But I didn't film that because I figured you've seen quite enough of me doing layers and layers of fur. I also did a little bit of shading on the bottom part of his belly there so that it would stand out from his tail a little bit. Overall, I uh, got a lot of experience from making this piece, both with the masking fluid and definitely with the fur. Also with how to make cute <laughs> animal faces because I haven't really done that much since I've been working on watercolors either. I'm very excited to do more cute fluffy animals, uh, especially cats. I love cats, they're my favorite thing. But I am happy to have this little guy going into my book, hopefully in the future. I'm very, very slow at writing this because it <laughs> um, it gives me a lot of anxiety and it, it is also just very slow and discouraging because I'm going back over my first draft and ha having to rewrite every sentence because I don't like how any of the sentences are worded, but I'll get done with it eventually. So I'll be happy to have pretty pictures to put in it then. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you go and check out a bunch of the other pumpkin challenge videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! While I'm painting this, this is happening. She thinks this is a comfortable place to be. She's stuffed between my lap and my desk. But no, this is this is where we want to be. Yeah. Yeah.